innovative businesses see each new day is an opportunity, an opportunity to create something new or completely reimagine something that already exists. What dreams do you have for your business? How will you use your innovation to change the world? Whatever your vision, Dell Technologies Advisors are here with the tools and expertise to help you do incredible things, working right alongside you, addressing your challenges, your needs, and helping you reach your goals. So while no business is the same, Dell Technologies believes there's an innovator in all of us. To do more with a Latitude laptop, Dell Technologies recommends Windows 11 Pro for business. Find tech that will help you reach your business goals by calling a Dell Technologies Advisor today at 877-ASK-DELL. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Live from the YouTube machine, it's The Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and are you eating escargot right now? Well, I hope to God your napkin is in your lap with the crease toward you. We're talking about etiquette today, so while Joe is shoving Cheez-Its in his pie hole like a toddler, the rest of us are trying to refine ourselves. Today, to help us class it up in here, we welcome the woman who makes the rest of us look like barbarians from Afford Anything, Paula Pant. And here with us today, we also welcome the man who taught etiquette to the Queen of England from LenPenzo.com, Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> it's just Len Penzo, and no table setting would be complete without a man who will delight you with his curtsy and steal your heart with his style and panache. It's OG. And since today is Barry Manilow's birthday, you better bet I'm going to be back with some Barry Manilow trivia. And now, a guy who knows to always use the fork that he just licked clean, it's Joe Salciha. Hey everybody, happy Friday to you. I am Joe Salciha, Average Joe Money on Twitter. And Doug, just before we start, it's Escargo. Escargo. Dude, what? No, okay. But that's ridiculous. Yep. Look, you're you're right twice a day, but this ain't one of those times, Joe. There's a T at the end of that word. It's right there. It is. It, why would you put it there if you're not supposed to pronounce it? it is, very good point. However, in this case, it is escargot. Yeah. But we're not here to debate that. We're here to talk etiquette. We're going to talk about money etiquette and maybe even how good etiquette might be able to land you a better job, maybe able to help you more money, or does it? Does it really matter as much as we think that it does? And here across the card table from me, the gentleman who is all about the etiquette on a Friday, the etiquette of making sure you leave by 5 p.m., duh, it's Mr. OG. How are you, man? <laughs> oh, well, we blew that one, didn't we? Because well, it's past 5 p.m. on a Friday? It's just about. Yeah. Well, the good news is you're, you're going to be on time and a half on this one, which is good, right? Uh, I'll trade that for my Friday night. Thanks. <laughs> Deal. And the person where it's Friday night, no matter what party she's at, it's Miss Paula Pant is here with us. How are you? I am great. You know, with the right attitude, it is Friday night, 24-7, 365. What's that thing? You know, I, I actually hate this phrase, Paula, the one that says that you never work a day in your life if you love your job. Mm -hmm. Like, doesn't that kind of make you yeah. want to? Yeah. Well, I, th I think it's a bunch of baloney. It's, uh, you know, it's, this is something you and I have talked about before. Your life is a picture, but each day is a pixel. And any one given pixel is n not necessarily that interesting. So no matter what you're doing, I mean, you could have the best job in the world, but, you know, sometimes you're just a pixel. Like every hour, every day is just a pixel of it. Or to stay with our analogy, it is a party, as you mentioned earlier, but it might be a bad party or just an okay party, not the world's best party. Right, right. Or it might be that lag time in the party where like everyone's talking to everybody else and you're kind of awkwardly standing around and, you know, so not every moment at a party is great. Like Doug does during these shows, just awkwardly sits there while we're hanging out doing intros. Uh, Miss, Miss, Mr. Len Pedzo is here deep under Los Angeles. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm afraid now that we're doing this uh, YouTube thing, everybody can actually see inside my bunker. 
And if uh, I'm not careful, they can probably see that the bunker has windows. So let's, is that, let's is that why you zoomed in so close and put your face so <laughs> yeah. close to the, the, puts, the uh, puts camera? Puts that chair right up next to it. Like, is your head really that big or <laughs> is that just uh, the camera adding 15 pounds? <laughs> Such Ouch. a fun day. By the Thank way, you. if you want to come Ouch. hang out with us while I make these shows, we are making them just for the summer. Going to have a summer of fun. So join us on Mondays. It's always fun talking about Friday on a Monday here. But join us on YouTube at the Stacky Benjamins page. Generally, it's uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. We're a little late today because I had to get to my current uh, location. But we got everybody here in this location. We got OG here. We got Doug. We got Paula. We got Len. So let's get this party started. But first... The future will be great, but today is just as incredible. Meet Nissan's most advanced lineup. If you can't get enough adrenaline, there's the all-new 400 HP Nissan Z. Or for your off-road adventures, check out the all-terrain Nissan Frontier. And for something more electric, there's the stylish Nissan Aria. So let's enjoy the ride. 2023 Ariane Z not yet available for purchase. Expected availability this spring for 2023 Z and this fall for 2023 Aria. This Pride, everyone's coming through for the Trevor Project on YouTube Shorts. Join us. Create a short showing how you're stepping up for Pride using the hashtag YouTube Pride Challenge. Come through for Pride on YouTube Shorts. Visit youtube.com backslash pride. Now we can get this party started. Hello, darlings. And now, it's time for your favorite part of the show, our Stacking Benjamins Headlines. Today's piece comes to us from the very hard-hitting website, MyRecipes.com. It's where Paula Pant goes for all of her hard-hitting finance topics. Isn't this like the secret (laughs) to afford anything is MyRecipes.com? Actually, I do have to say, I own the domain NepaleseRecipes.com, so I'm a little disappointed that you didn't choose that one. That being said, I only own the domain. I haven't actually developed it out, so it's literally just a blank domain right now. That's what I was going to ask. How many drunken domain buying parties have you had, Paula? (laughs) Quite a few. I also own GoThugs.com, which, depending on how you read it, could spell got hugs God. <laughs> it's an either or website or it could be both depending it's on like which when way. i tried to get the og on twitter and i kept on searching for it and it just came up with a guy named theo g <laughs> you know what that doesn't rick edelman has that has that same thing with his website right he always advertises it's he goes rick edelman.com or rice delman rice delman yeah because <laughs> he spells rick like a Nink and poop. Yeah, he forgot the he forgot the K. Or his parents did anyway. All uh, <laughs> Ricks that spell your enough. name with R I C send your hate mail to OG at stackybenjamins.com. Hey, hey Paula, also, you haven't all, taken all people, Paula, all people. you mm-hmm. Paula, you haven't taken the, the persistent Nepalese itch yet, have oh, you? Oh, I have not. No, okay. that one is well, still up for grabs. I was gonna say all people who also use the word nincompoop on a regular basis, send your mail. Oh, well, it's on. <laughs> This is this is family friendly. I've, that was the PG version. I can kick it up a notch if y'all want. Nincompoop, those knuckleheads. I don't know if you guys mind or not, but we're going to get to the piece because it's called 11. Can't wait. 11. Yeah. <laughs> We've We've tried, on we this tried to all delay day. for as long as Paul. All day, I've been thinking. <laughs> yes. 11 fine dining etiquette rules you've probably broken your whole <laughs> life. And it was interesting when I'm flipping around and I'm looking for things to talk about. And I saw this piece. I thought, of course, what are these rules? What are the etiquette rules that I've never seen that maybe I have have broken? And Len, we'll start Clip with you. I, I don't know. It's, you were going through these. Did you know any of these existed? I, did, I think I knew of 11. I think I knew of three of them. That's actually more, I think, than I knew. Uh, yeah. uh, the only one I was kind of aware of was the flip the oyster over when you were done with it. But uh, that's about it. I did not even know that one. Paula, did you know that one? I did not know that one. And just to give people an idea of what these are, because we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. But number one, never lift your menu off the table. OG, have you heard that one? Yes, I know that. You do know that. Now, where do you where do you learn that from? Where did you get that from? Uh, I don't I don't remember. Honestly, there's a book called Emily Post's Guide to Etiquette. It's a small read. I've uh, studied it. Well, it's a, did you did you seriously? I mean, I have. Yes. 
Well, and it is funny because just to tell people what's going on here, OG said ahead of time, he's like, what does that have to do with money? And uh, as we were discussing the fact we were going to talk about this piece, I got to tell you guys that when I was at a dinner, as we were going around the country, deciding where we were going to live next, Cheryl, for her profession, as part of the interview process, we had to go to dinners at each of these places with the other people she was going to work with. And I have to tell you, knowing a little bit about etiquette really, really helped because of the fact that I knew that that was the only part of the interview they were going to have with me. They were putting us with these other people she was going to work with to see exactly if uh, she was a fit. So I'm wondering, Paula, if knowing something Mm -hmm. about etiquette actually can make you a bunch more money, like it might have at least saved a job for my spouse. I think if you know the same basics that everybody else knows, like put your napkin in your lap, use the silverware from the outside um, moving inside, you know, that sort of thing. Sure. Like if, if that, if they're the standard basics that most people know, then you'll be most likely judged on it because that's what everybody else is doing. And so really what you're being judged on is your ability to mirror the subtleties of what your fellow peers at the table are doing. But if it's something really obscure, then nobody else is going to know it. And so I don't see how that could necessarily help you. Though The menu thing, for example, it would never occur to me that a person was being etiquetted, etiquetous, etiquetous, polite, if they refused to, or if they declined to pull their menu off the table. Yeah. Some of these other ones place discards on the upper left part of your plate, things you're not going to eat. Keep your bread on the plate at all times, unless you're delivering it to your mouth. Fold your napkin with a crease toward you before putting it in your lap. Doug, you're all about that one. I already covered that one earlier. <laughs> yeah. No need to repeat that. So you don't fling your, whatever you have in your napkin all over yes. yourself. That's all over. Right. So once again, OG with the win here, OG, yeah. when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to etiquette, Paul is talking about table etiquette. What about, the, I think there's also some etiquette in conversations though. Isn't there kind of a back and forth? Oh, that's a very, <laughs> you're asking the wrong guy. About like that. that one. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, I was just going to add to what Paula said. I think at some point you've got like the base level of stuff, right? You you know, don't slurp your soup or whatever, (laughs) you know, or take a, yeah. Nice. Just for the sound effect. (laughs) Yeah. Don't do that. Microphone etiquette. Just what we need. Don't don't do that. You know, that sort of thing. But isn't there sometimes where kind of like attracts like a little bit, right? Where, you know, if you notice somebody that has, let's say maybe example, for example, you have a nice, um, you love nice jewelry or you have a nice watch or something like that. And somebody else is wearing a nice watch. Wouldn't you also kind of sort of notice that maybe and say like, oh, I noticed that you have the you know, thing. And if you're Absolutely. using your example, Joe, about going out for a job interview or kind of that next level job interview, I mean, you're not going to necessarily say, well, now remember, don't uh, lift your menu. But if you are aware of that and you see that the other person also is aware of that, wouldn't you be like, okay, they pay attention to details. Yeah. And the only way you're going to be aware of that is if you know those things. Uh, uh, Len, for your job working for the man, I mean, how much have you had to study etiquette or pay attention to etiquette working, you know, when you, you've had to talk in front of generals in a pair of jeans, right? That that is true. Yes. That's a true story. Yes. You know, is this in terms of conversation or any etiquette in, in, I'm just talking about conversation, which is like, don't show up to talk to a general in a pair of jeans. I mean, you knew that one ahead of time. So it actually made it so that you were able to kind of laugh it off because you knew just how bad that was going to be. And I think you mentioned before when you told the story, it actually went well, partly because you were able to deflect. Yeah, it did go well. And the first thing I did was was I addressed the problem. And what uh, Joe is referring to is this was actually a time I was supposed to meet you, Joe, out in Texarkana, if you remember. That's right. I was flying into uh, Shreveport on a business trip and my luggage, I made it, but my luggage didn't. And so... (laughs) And I had a meeting at that time, you know, right after I got off the plane and um, unfortunately not right after, but uh, several hours after, but the luggage never made it. And I was stuck uh, having to brief uh, in what I flew in, which I never did again. I always made sure if I was briefing on the day I was traveling, I'd wear my suit (laughs) traveling. But yes, it deflected because I addressed the issue and it lightened the load and it took a lot of pressure off right out of the gate. Well, that's what I was going to ask, Len. We'll stick with you. If you're not sure what the etiquette is in a situation, how do you handle that? I think you're on, you'd be honest about it and you might want to put it on yourself and just say, hey, you know, I'm a, 
the heathen here that's uh, not very refined. I, you know, I'm not sure what the etiquette is here, so I'll do my best. And if I make any faux pas, you know, please excuse um, any faux pas I make. They're not intentional, and I apologize in advance. It's like Paula, you're big with the uh, the royal family. How many things do you see of those articles of like people who are like, oh my gosh, can you believe that so and who's it decided to shake the hand of this person? Or there's a big thing with Tom Cruise. They did the top one of the Top Gun premieres in London, and Kate, whatever her title is, was there Middleton, and he like put his hand out to like help her up the stairs like a normal person would be, and she tolerated mm-hmm. it for like two steps, and then like they, she did all this fancy stuff to like basically go no bro, you can't touch me. Right. That's the rules. Right, right, I'm sure right. sure didn't yes. do it on purpose. Yeah, exactly, exactly. There's all that specialized etiquette related to the royals, like never turn your back on the queen or um, all of those. We did. Do, use the and word, the use the word lavatory instead of. So we said. <laughs> <laughs> Always Talk turn your back hand. on the queen and king. Throw your tea in the river. Yes. C, by the way, but I think there is maybe it was the river. I think there is some uh, some other ways to handle that too. OG, how about you? Like how to deal with the fact that uh, you don't know what the rules are? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm with Len. I think the quicker that you go, I, I don't know what to do here. Or if there's somebody that uh, that you can kind of lean on real quick, you know, I don't know what I'm supposed to say, or I don't know what I'm supposed to do in this situation. Give me the crash course, or at least tell me the top three things not to do. <laughs> so I don't <laughs> totally put my uh, foot in my mouth. You know, I mean, we've all done it. Uh, certainly unintentionally, I'm sure. Doug? Well, I, you know, I, there was a time when I used to, uh, you know, take folks out to lunch, especially when I was hiring for my leadership team. I would, I would always make sure I took them out to eat because when you have people in that setting versus a typical interview setting, they tend to let their guard down a little bit. It's more social. It gives you something to do besides just focus on the, you know, the typical interview scenario and you see a different side of that person. And I was always looking for how they handled themselves in that situation. And I hate to say it, but if I saw elbows on the table, if I saw mouth, you know, chewing with, I should say if they were chewing with their mouth open or any of those kinds of more typical, easy to spot faux pas, I had to judge him on that. But when I had people, and this is all linking back to what OG and and Len were were talking about as far as what do you do when you don't know? There were a few times I can think of when people would, would say, I'm not sure what to do in this situation. And when they said that with very little confidence and they sounded scared and I don't want to make a mistake here, that never worked in their favor, in my opinion. I'm a pretty judgy guy. But when they said, I'm not really sure what to do. Clothing attire. That you just psh, do whatever. Holy we're, going, yeah. we're going back at me for that. Okay, okay Doug fine. in the Technicolor dream coat. Well, go ahead. That's right. That's right. But if they did it with confidence, if they said, look, I'm not really sure what to do in this situation, and I, I don't mean any offense by this, but I think X, Y, and Z, or they still spoke with confidence and still conducted themselves with confidence, I never counted it against them because they still had that presence. They still had some confidence and they were willing to allow that there may be some uh, sort of rules of the road that they weren't aware of. But it was those times when they were really like, I don't really know. Don't judge me. Like, you know what? I'm judging you now. That's really good because I have the same standard as like when I would interview and if somebody, I would always prefer somebody, they didn't know an answer. They said they didn't know because there's nothing worse in business when you're relying on somebody's expertise or, or you want their opinion, it's much better if they are secure enough in themselves to say they don't know than to, to pretend they know and give an answer and that comes back to haunt you later. It's always be- I've always told people working under me, if you don't know the answer, you can say, I don't know and I'll get back to you. But don't pretend you know when you don't know. Because that that does so much more harm. Which is actually interesting, uh, Len, because in, in matters of just table manners and etiquette, when I was at the Citadel, we had this uh, short course called The Art of Being a Gentleman when the Citadel was an all-men's school. And we sat down with a local Miss Manners person and went through all this stuff. But at the table and in polite company, if you did not know what to do, the example this woman gave us was, and it served me well for a long time, is if you don't know what to do, follow what Andy Warhol did. And we're all like, what the hell did Andy Warhol do? Andy Warhol would be in these high-end New York restaurants and he would eat salad 
with his fingers, right? Everybody else is worried about what fork to use. He would just reach in and he's eating it with his fingers. And her point was, if you don't know what to do, just do it with a hell of a lot of confidence. Like if you're going to do it, do it, just do it. And maybe some people will notice, maybe they won't, but you know, if it's not going to kill you, I can see how in your job, you know, don't fake it. Just say, Hey, I'm not sure if this is the right thing or not, but I think yeah. at the, but I think at the table, if you don't know which fork to use, man, grab it and go, <laughs> just gra- grab use it and the, go. The, in Len's case, the Borat the rule. The if, Borat, yeah. yeah. But I mean, when I'm choosing what I want to wear, I'm doing that with all kinds of confidence. I'm wearing the orange. I'm just going for it. But in Len's job, uh, you can't fake that. <laughs> Coming up next, uh, and by the way, is it good etiquette to, to rip on somebody's clothing while they're live with you in a podcast? I don't, I, I don't know what the <laughs> etiquette rule is, is, is there, but uh, I guess Doug would argue Playful probably, banter. probably not. I believe is the uh, goal here. Coming up next, uh, second half of this conversation, it, we're going to talk about rules of etiquette with your money. What rules of etiquette exist? Our producer, Brooke, the creator of our 201 newsletter, has a bunch of ideas. I know our contributors have ideas, too. What are some of the money etiquette rules that you have? Some that are good. Some maybe we want to throw out. We've got that coming up next. But before that, we got this little trivia competition going on all year long. And this is where, if you're new to the Stacky Benjamin Show, we pit each of these fine three contributors against each other in a fight to the whatever i don't i don't know a fight to losing a fight to the end of the year yes to to see who can get the most get the most answers right uh it is a fight for the worst trophy ever oh gee i don't know if you have that that trophy close by so people can see it i don't but i'm keeping all of the um uh hershey kisses that were in it in it because someone will be in for a surprise eventually some year somebody's gonna bite into a hershey kiss and realize that was from like 2019 (laughs) That's not a Hershey kiss. And the big science experiment going on is, does it matter? Like, we're going to find out whether it does matter if that stuff ages or not. But we've got a score, which uh, Paula Pant, unfortunately, less and less favors you. I know you weren't here last week. (sighs) Dana sat in for you, but uh, Paula OG got a little bit more caught up. All right. It happens. It happens. There's still uh, plenty of many, many months to go before the year is over. The score is Paula five and a half. OG has seven and a half. They tied at one earlier in the year. And then Len leading the charge with nine. So OG can pull up into maybe a little closer tie or Paula can make it a three horse race again. Let's see. And Doug, you've got today's question. Darn right I do, Joe. Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. As I mentioned at the top of the show, it's Barry Manilow's birthday. And you know I love Barry Manilow. I can't stop talking about the guy. What? I mean, can't a man sing Mandy in the bath after a long, hard day? The man was actually born Barry Allen Pincus. And I'll tell you something you probably don't know. He wrote a ton of great songs. But the one song he didn't actually write was, I write the songs. Here's what didn't sound quite as good. I wrote most of the songs that make the old people sing. It just doesn't have that same kind of, you know. But one of his biggest hits was Copacabana. Copacabana is not only a really fun word to say. See, you're saying it right now, and you're realizing it's fun. It's also a famous beach in Rio de Janeiro. That's where Manilow got the idea for the title, but the song is really about the famous Copacabana nightclub in New York City. Manilow frequented it in the 60s, but my question is, what year did the nightclub open? I'll be back with the answer after I merengue and do the (laughs) cha-cha-cha. All right, uh, the Copacabana, the hottest spot north of Havana, Len Penzo. When did the Copacabana Uh, open? I'm sure every time you go to New York City, didn't you go to the Copa? I think the Copa is uh, long closed now, isn't it? Anybody know? You got me. Copa, Copa, if you're still (laughs) open and you want to sponsor the show so people know you're open, (laughs) send an email to joe at stackybenjamins.com. But Len, what year did the Copacabana open? I have, again, this is... Uh, the the one in Rio, right? The is one in the there, one, the one in New York just, City. New York City. I just uh, are you listening at all? No. New York City. Uh, New York City. 
Copacabana. My goodness. I don't think they had that kind of stuff in the 1800s. You know, that sounds like something that would open up. I shouldn't give this away because I know this is such a good reasoning why you guys are going to both Chelsea Brennan me on either side if I give you my reasoning. Well, you probably do it now anyways, whether, no matter what my reasoning is. So Keep yapping. Another. Yeah. <laughs> I think this, you know, these these clubs came up, I think, in the Roaring Twenties. I, I think it just makes total sense that something like this would happen, come up in the Roaring Twenties. So I'm going to pick right dead center, 1925. 1925. By the way, OK Now, IK Now tells us on YouTube that it's open. I just went in TripAdvisor and it is open. Uh, Seriously, so, dude? Okay, OK Now, I know. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> as in okay now i know how to read <laughs> okay now apparently i don't know how to read wow is it good etiquette line to just say you don't know their name is that the best, is that yeah, the best right. etiquette? <laughs> you're having trouble squinting at your laptop all right uh what year did oh you say God. 1925 yeah all right oh gee what do you think yep. about that one yeah, I was going down the same path. Roaring 20s. Uh, grandma's birthday year, 1923. 23 undercuts them a little low. So, Paula. All right. I'm Chelsea Brennaning for 1926. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> and that's the way Len gets the love blanket right between yeah. OG and Paula. Yeah. <laughs> nice job. We would love to tell you who won this thing, but we don't play that way. We will be uh, right back. I'm not like all the other hotels. I'm more what you might call boutique. Seeking a traveler with a romantic heart must love leather lounge chairs and a library brimming with poets from around the globe. Not interested in anything long-term, just an intimate weekend full of iconic architecture, lively repartee with discerning guests and being steps away from the city center. You know where to find me. Download the hotels app to find your perfect somewhere. Well, I've had the experience of moving twice in the last four and a half years and the home buying experience, uh, not all it's cracked up to be. I love both of the houses that we moved into, but there were so many frustrations that would have been solved had I been using Navy Federal at the time. Navy Federal Credit Union is here to help military members and their families, that's me, tackle home ownership. They offer mortgage options with zero down payments. So you don't need to wait years to save. They offer mortgage options that don't require Private mortgage insurance, so you'll save money each month. Members save $2,500 on average when they choose Navy Federal for their mortgage. With resources like Realty Plus, you can get an experienced real estate agent. They're a top VA home letter. You can learn more at NavyFederal.org. Insured by NCUA, equal housing lender. Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. You know, the Copacabana is an iconic New York nightclub used as a setting in movies like Goodfellas, Raging Bull, and The Irishman. Originally, much like this podcast, it was the shadow business of a mob boss. It went on to host incredible debuts such as the comedy team of Martin and Lewis, as well as The Supremes. So, when did the Copacabana nightclub open? On November 10th. 1940, which means Paula has Chelsea threaded <laughs> her way right into the winner's circle. Paula makes Fantastic. sure she keeps it close. Yeah. Keeps it close. Back in the race and the race titans as we head into the long hot dog days of summer. You know, to be fair, Paula. to be fair, yeah, Thank Paula, you. you know, she's had a couple chan other chances to Chelsea Brennan me, and she didn't, and it cost her. So good for you, Paula. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Len, are you telling Paula to be more ruthless? Is that what you're saying? Paula, be more ruthless. No? <laughs> no, I'm just, I kind of feel bad for Paula. She was so far behind. So I'm, I'm glad she's coming up there. <laughs> makes the competition more interesting. It makes I, it, this is better radio. Plus, if I was going to get any question right, one about a New York City nightclub, that's, that's fitting, <laughs> you know? But you didn't know if it was open or not, though. I have no idea. No idea. Now you're going to go. Okay, now I know. <laughs> have you had an egg cream yet? Have you had an egg cream? No, I still haven't. I've never had an egg cream. <laughs> no. Allegedly, that is an alcoholic beverage. I have never had one, though. Have you had one, Len? No. Well, 
<laughs> have you had 12? That's right. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Paula, just because she doesn't know the name of it, doesn't mean she hasn't been there. She may have, she may have been there. I don't think there they're and alcoholic. Just, though. Just, just, just I don't no think they're idea. alcoholic. They're not, they're not even close. What, yeah, egg no. cream? I've never drank an egg cream, so I don't, I don't actually know. Hey, if you guys don't mind, let's was... roll into the second half of this. It's chocolate. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about you, Paul. I mean, I know you could pour clear alcohol into damn near anything liquid <laughs> and be cool with it. Yeah, yeah, Everclear and egg cream. But traditionally, an egg cream is not boozy. <laughs> Wait, then why did somebody bring up egg cream when I talked about the Copacabana? I think Len did. Just... I did. It's in New York. Maybe Justin from Germany knows. <laughs> All right, uh, on to the second half of this discussion. <laughs> Joe has lost control of the show. We are <laughs> so fun being live, but also just, uh, it's like hurting goldfish, people. We, we, we got a great second half. We're going to talk about money and etiquette. And uh, this half of the show is sponsored by magnify money doug what happens when you go to magnifymoney.com using our link stackybenjamins.com slash magnify money oh my god joe i don't know um do i finally find an eggshell finish for my bedroom that i've been looking for for years you may that would be a nice side hustle for them if if people want that plus all the best things that are not at brick mortar banks like savings accounts checking accounts 92 percent of all the online Banking options available ranked head to head at magnifymoney.com. Go to stackybenjamins.com slash magnify money. Good time to do that, by the way. Interest rates changing very quickly. Time to maybe reassess what you're doing with your online banking. Uh, here in the second half, I want to throw away uh, table etiquette and I want to talk instead about etiquette with your money. There are any etiquette rules that you can think of? Uh, Len, let's start with you again. Any etiquette rules with your money that you can think of, which um, either is a great rule to remember for people out there listening or a rule that maybe should be thrown away? Yeah. For example, let's say you've got a party uh, that you're at work that, that you throw for somebody and you got to get a gift. It would be kind, it would be wise to consider everybody's budget before, you know, you say, Hey, let's all chip in and let's all chip in, say $20 or a hundred dollars or whatever, you know, or $50, you know, you got to pick a number that's equivalent to everybody's income, not just like your boss's boss or, or, you know, you've got to be considerate of everybody's income before you set that number that they've, they've got to chip in for. I'm glad that you said that because I remember an early job I had in college and our boss, uh, the general manager of this place I worked, Len, super, super wealthy dude, and set the bar at like 50 bucks. And I, he wasn't, I mean, he wasn't paying me much over minimum wage. And I had to go find a, a gift for somebody I didn't care about that cost 50 bucks. And then I remember going to him and he's like, what, you can't afford 50 bucks, can't you? I'm like, you don't pay me anything. Like, you crazy. <laughs> right. Hey, well, then that's a good opportunity to ask for a raise right there, right? There, there, there you go. There, pay me more and let's there, make it 100 opening. bucks. There's your opening. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Paula, etiquette around gifts? Um, I would say not, well, not so much around gifts, but around like, the the example was if it's a party or a potluck or somebody's yeah. birthday, like if someone invites you over, you know, to a house party or something like that, like ask what you can bring, offer to bring a bottle of wine, offer to bring a bag of chips or some pretzel, a bag of, you know, pretzels, something, something that you can contribute to the overall gathering. I like that. I, I remember, piece of that remember when, uh, when Jeff was here a couple of weeks ago, Jeff was talking about, he's always the paper plates and utensils guy. Like, because he yeah. doesn't cook, but he's like, we always need something. Yeah. So show up at the door hey, with everybody, something. everybody, I brought the napkins. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Is there something though, OG, when you throw a party at your house, you got a cookout at your house or whatever, somebody brings something, you're like, you brought that? Is there something that's unacceptable to bring? Or are you just happy that people chipped in? No, I think that uh, if you're going anywhere to anybody's house, you have to walk in with something, especially if it's some sort of party, you know, even if it wasn't asked for or I mean, frankly, even if they say, no, you don't have to bring anything, you always bring a bottle of wine or something. I try to make it a point that if you brought something, we're going to use it that day. You know, it's like, oh, you brought a bottle of wine. You must think this is good. Let's crack it open. You brought cookies. All right. We're going to set them out. Even if we already had dessert planned, there's a reason why you brought that stuff. Maybe you're just trying to get it out of your closet, <laughs> you know, but, but which is fine. A little re-gift you know. going on. 
Yeah. Th- that's fine. So let's get it going. I was thinking uh, when you were talking about the gifts, you know, and being cognizant of everybody else, it reminded me of that movie Four Christmases. I don't know if anybody else has seen that with, um, uh, anyway, I can't Vince remember who's Vaughn. in it, but it's really, yeah, Vince Vaughn, that's right. And um, some other people, but uh, <laughs> he shows up. He shows up at his like dad's Christmas and that's obviously the family that's not as well to do. And he gets all his nephews Xboxes and they're like, Whoa, Oh, this is awesome. And the dad's the dad who's his brother is like, how'd you fit that in a $10 budget? He's like, $10. I didn't, oops. I didn't know there was hoops. My bad. It's it so, so he like totally upstaged his nephew's parents basically at Christmas by going Xboxes all around for everyone. You know, might so. pay, might pay to read the email ahead of time. Yeah. But before yeah. you show up, but that's another annoying thing. We, we had this go on in our family about like the gift thing. Like we'd all have this, like it's the same deal, like $25 gift cards. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to give you a $25 gift card so you can turn around and give me a $25 gift card so that I can turn around and give mom a $25 gift card so she can give me a $25 gift card. Let's just get together and just have fun. <laughs> if you need a $25 gift card for something, I'll just get that for you. But I don't need one back. Let's not play the shuffle the gift card game. Yeah. Uh, rather well, irritating. Why don't we each buy ourselves the gift card we want the most? And we'll open yes. it and we'll all pretend like we're surprised by the gift we gave yeah. ourselves. Or lottery tickets. We used to do that where we'd all show up with like, you know, whatever, 20 bucks worth of lottery tickets and any denomination you wanted to get, it all went in the pot and then you draw them out as you know, oh. you just go around and yeah. draw it out. And, cool. you know, sometimes That's, yeah, I like fun. that one. Sometimes you'd get, you know, you'd be like, all right, I'm taking a $5 one. So pass me for the next five rounds, you know, or whatever. So let's talk about the check at dinner. Brooke, who writes our 201 has some feelings about restaurants. You're out with a group of people, Len, and uh, and it comes time for the check. Etiquette around the check. Uh, don't you hate it when you go to the restaurant, There's you're with 10 or 12 or 15 people, a big group, and you have, say, the salad, and then uh, all people all around you have the filet mignon and the the oysters, Rockefeller, and they've, they've loaded up on the alcohol and you're drinking a, a Coke. Then at the end, like the guy with the, the guy get party. the one guy gets the check. And he says, "Let's split it down the middle. Let's split it down the middle." You know, you yeah. got to be cognizant of those. It, that really puts the people who have the salad and the coke in a really bad position. You know, makes them look bad if they speak up. You know, so that don't to me, be that's such terrible. a party pooper. Get some red meat <laughs> exactly. and wine and oysters well, exactly. in your body every so often for crying out yeah. loud. Yeah. OG, like solves that. Right. OG solves food. that very quickly. Stop doing that. <laughs> Jump on board. Stop doing that. <laughs> don't be the wet blanket at dinner. Uh, yeah, we're going to do, I'll do the tomahawk ribeyes. What are you going to have, Len? Uh, I'll have the Caesar. Uh, no croutons or dressing, please. So basically just lettuce and uh, ice water. Hold the ice. <laughs> And OG's Remind me like, not to go to a, a, a group function with you, OG. No, go. you want to come with a group functions with me. That's the point. <laughs> Why? So we can not subsidize your dinner? Salad. Yes, I would totally subsidize. <laughs> yeah, that, that, Len, that happened to me last summer and I learned quickly, but last summer I went out to dinner with like 10 multimillionaires and I don't mean like multi, multi-millionaires. And I ordered light because I wasn't sure how we were going to handle the bill. And my appetizer and and a burger cost me 165 bucks for an appetizer and a but burger. But you got to hang out every, with a whole bunch of cool rich people. Everybody else was ordering just bottles of this and bottles of that. And all this, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I just got forked royally. So That'll yesterday. Huh? Are you telling me they split the tab? These are all oh, multi, multi, multi. Not one of them said, here, I'll they pick did. it up, Joe. They, I'll, they, I'll, they I'll pick it up, Doug. Throw, throw them in their cards. So yesterday I'm golfing with three of those guys. I'm like, I'm not making this mistake again. <laughs> I ordered huge. I went all in with all of the expensive things and everybody split the bill. And at least I got my money's worth. <laughs> I wasn't going to get completely scrawled like I did the first time. I thought that this was going to end differently where they decide at the end to go all right everybody throw theirs in and then whoever the whoever <laughs> the, 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 the server will pick out which card yeah, they're yeah, the use the I, yeah, yeah credit card roulette yes that would be a neighbor doug story wouldn't it that's a that's a fun way to play paula <laughs> anything to add on splitting the check i gotta say credit card roulette is a fun game but make sure <laughs> it's a scary that you game. Are play it <laughs> It's a fun game, but I will say, make sure that everyone knows the rules ahead of time, because it did happen once that my friends and I played a game of credit card roulette and we were with this uh, 
this new person who had like never hung out with us before. And he didn't really understand the rules. And then he ended up being the loser and he was a sore loser. It became like a problem. Mm-hmm. So eventually it was 72. Eventually somebody like just stepped in and was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll pay. Cause this guy was like very upset when he lost. Like and a then character figured test out, yeah, exactly. Like, do you want to hang out? Are you, are you the type of person that can like take one every so often you know, for the right. team, you can be one of the, in the cool kids club here. Right. And, exactly. Uh, you know what? And we never lost. invited him to come right. hang out again. Loser. Probably yeah. had salad for dinner too. I, don't, I, no, I think he, he ordered about what the rest of us did. He, he didn't pull I a could. Len. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Len's like, I'm just sitting right here. I'm just sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? If you knew me, I would, I'm not the guy who just goes to the restaurant and eats a salad. You know, I'm, no. I'm, yeah. I am the tomahawk steak guy. That's, that's definitely, oh, boy, blue. I'm trying to be, I was trying to be empathetic to the salad yes. eaters out there. But Brooke says something on the other side here. She says, don't assume somebody who's flashy with their money is going to pick up the tab whenever you go out. Just because they try to flaunt it doesn't mean they actually have it. If you know somebody is willing, Paula, to pick up the tab every time you go out, do you let them do it? Good etiquette to say, you know what, let's split this every time. Yeah, I mean, I think if you value the relationship, then you take turns. You know, you're like, hey, you got it last time. Let me pick it up this time. Oh, geez, got a big smile on his face. This is just such a fun game that I play because <laughs> you can set this up on people They're like, now nah, I got it. Now nah, I got it. Now nah, I got it. And then you do the whole, like, you guys want to split this or what? <laughs> just watch this sheer terror. <laughs> it's a long, it's a long con, but damn, it's fun. So wait a minute. You, know, you, you pick it up. Four, you pick it up three times, four times in a row for steak brother. Then he's sure you're yeah. paying and you rip the yeah. rug out from under it. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. When he's yep. all in, pick so it out on your dime. So that's going to cost you like what two, three grand? Is it worth it? Is the payout worth it to watch their face go white? Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I think there's another one here that I want to talk about just briefly, which is don't judge a book by its cover. And I think we'll set it up with a little uh, movie clip. You guys might have heard this before. <laughs> Do you remember me? No, I'm sorry. I was in here yesterday. You wouldn't wait on me? Oh. You work on commission, right? Uh, yes. Big mistake. Big. Huge. I have to go shopping now. And then uh, Cindy Crawford walks out with all these bags and bags and bags of clothing. Judging a book by their cover, I mean, I can't tell you, Paula, how many times I've been in meetings where either somebody thinks that uh, there's a person at the end of the table who's the very important person in the room and all they want to do is talk to that person or they think that you're the the important person and really the person sitting next to you might be like this ladder climby thing. Judging the book by its cover can get you into big trouble. Right, exactly. Well, and not just that, I think it uh, it's like the character that it reveals underneath, a character that's a little bit more transactional than relational. What do you do if somebody like, is, if, if you've got a friend who is very, very frugal and I know, and Brooke writes this, she's like, uh, uh, don't judge somebody because they're super frugal. I mean, I have, I know mm-hmm. people where, where, you know, you go out with them sometimes and you'll see people call them cheap and you can tell they get yep. really uncomfortable because maybe it's not that they're cheap. They just don't value the big expense. I have a friend who's like this. And I think the biggest uh, distinction is like, so this particular friend he owns it. She is cheap AF and he is proud of it and he right. owns it and he like advertises it and he lets you know. And so it was like, so he harbors no illusions, nor does he allow anyone else to harbor illusions. He like completely takes pride in the fact that he is that guy. So it's great hanging out with him because like, you know exactly what you're getting. You know, he's the person who's going to walk into a bar with a flask, you know, and order a diet Coke and then like be pouring, pouring from his flask under the table. Like that's you, you gotta know be he's one, that guy. That's gotta be one charming MF right there. There's <laughs> no way you want to hang out with that guy unless he has just got the best personality on the planet. Well, it's like what I respect about him is that he is so unabashedly who he is, you know, versus people who are frugal, but then they pretend or cheap, but they, they pretend not to be. And then they kind of like, I don't know, well, you're all splitting the bill and they short it by like 
five dollars. Are you saying you know? the etiquette, Paula, here in this case is really on the person who is frugal to know yourself and and lean into it? Not yeah, a, not exactly. on their friends. Like, don't get mad at your friends that they call you cheap because you're frugal in a situation. Yeah, I'd say if you can't live it down, play it up. Like, if that's the way that you want to interact with money in a social context, then be sure to like let everyone know. Lean into it. Lean in strong. A lot of talk lately. I want to end on this one. A lot of talk lately, Len, on sharing salaries, right? And on people having a little bit more transparency about what we all make because you're seeing X person's making X, somebody else is making Y. Brooke writes here, says, you know, don't go share your salaries, especially when you're drunk. She said she had somebody badgering her who made less money than she made badger her about how much money she made over and over and over when they were drunk. And she said, it just made it really uncomfortable. Where do you come down on sharing how much money you make? Well, I guess it depends in a work situation. And there's a big disparity between years on the job between myself and a colleague. I will share information when it's really close. And we're almost peers in terms of Uh, levels or what have you. I'm a little more leery of doing that because it could cause problems depending on who's making a little more, who's making a little less. But But do you think um, that that might actually, I mean, it seems like there's almost no stakes in sharing it with somebody who's at a different level than you are. And there's very high stakes if you share it with somebody who's close to you, but it could end up making you a lot more money if you find out they're being paid more than you. Well, yeah, it could. (laughs) It, It could. It could also get you... I don't know. It can be bad too. If, if you have the reasons for making more than somebody else, who's a close peer to you um, and you find out, then by all means, go to the boss and give proof why you're worth, you know, you're being underpaid. So, you know, it's, it depends how much, Hey, it's Pandora's box, right? Yeah. So you gotta be, if you're going to open Pandora's box, you gotta be willing to, to handle whatever comes out of that box. Could be good, could be bad. So you just got to be careful with that um, for things for like my kids and what have you. I've never hidden my salary or what I earn. In fact, I show them, I've showed them, you know, every pay raise I've ever got. I have a complete record from the first day I was hired all the way through, <laughs> all the way through today, you know, and they can see, you know, how salaries progressed over time in the years that were lean guy got nothing. And, um, you know, just to kind of give them an idea of, you know, when you have to make a decision to jump, Because during those lean years, I had to jump companies, you know, to make up for the lean years. So it's good information. It's very valuable. But if you're going to share with people at work, you got to be careful. You got to be really careful. Yeah, there can be a lot of whiplash in that situation. Oh, gee, you're shaking your head or you're nodding your head rather. Like a bobble. (laughs) Like a bobblehead. (laughs) Joe, when we were working at American Express, I had a mentor who um, was, you know, a couple levels above me. And I think this is what Len was getting to. And earlier in our careers, it was much more of a sales organization. And I think you have some, it's a different dynamic if it's that, right? If it's a sales organization, you have some flexibility there to kind of, from a motivation standpoint, like, look, this is what you can do. But I have this very distinct memory of a guy that uh, I worked for. His wife would go out of town every so often, and then he'd, he'd get to have the boys over. You know, we'd have bottles of wine and smoke cigars and go to the steakhouse and, you know, do all that stuff. And one time we were at this uh, restaurant and to your point, Len was, you know, probably a bottle and a half of wine into it and had the, you know, the Neptune platter of seafood tower of stuff, you know, all that stuff. And he reaches into his pocket and he's kind of, you know, a little tips and he kind of has this little teeny tiny piece of paper and he starts unfolding it and he shows it to the entire table. He goes, look at this. And it was a check for like $27,000. And he goes, I get one of these every month. And he like crumpled it back up and like stuffed it back in his pocket. And he's got his calculator. <laughs> I didn't need to calculate it. I could do the math in my head. But, I, but, but the guy was several levels, you know, above where we were. And he was talking to, to your point, talking to people who were like way, way, way below him and using it much more as a motivation factor, right. you know, like, Correct. like, And I think that when you're, you know, when you're in the salary world and you're saying like, if you told somebody that makes $50,000 that you made 60,000 and they're at the same level, they might get pretty ticked off about that. Cause that's, that's at $10,000 is like a known quantity. But if you tell somebody who makes $50,000, if you're like, you know, the senior management, you go, I made 500,000. That's like an incomprehensible sub. Yeah. There's, I mean, you could say 500,000, 500 million. It's just, it doesn't even matter. It's such a big number 
that there's not, like you said, Joe, not as much risk to, to say that, but I think that you've got to, if you're going to do something like that, you better have a whole story that goes with it, you know, because you can't just say like, well, I made $380,000 last year. Speaking of having the story right, I had the story wrong from Brooke. Brooke actually wrote it in the comments that it wasn't a work colleague that she said she agrees that's different. It was a neighbor. And I believe uh, now, Brooke, that you, I mean, how annoying you're at a neighborhood cookout and your neighbor is hammering you for the amount of money you make. <laughs> we had that exact same thing happen. That's what Did I was, you really? I was telling Doug this story before. Um, we were at a dinner for, for Valentine's Day here locally with a whole bunch of friends. And uh, I had recently had some stuff go on, you know, in my personal life that caused me to write a big check. Then the wife of the person that I was talking to was kind of like, well, so how much of the check, how much was that check that you wrote? And I'm like, oh, it was, you know, it was a lot of money. And it's, you know, she's like, well, how much was it? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it was a lot, it was a big number, you know, beep, boop, bop, <laughs> you know, leave me alone. You don't want to know. And then finally she goes, no, no, seriously, how much was it? And I go, and I whip the number out and she goes, oh, and her husband looks at her and she, he goes, can you be done now? <laughs> you know, like, like it was, it was, it just got to the point where I was like, all right, it just is what it is now. Like uh, it That's was a, very, very, very awkward. You know, I, I would do that to my, if my neighbors asked, I would tell them because I live way below my means. So I, you know what, maybe they'll learn something from it because I'm sure there's, I have neighbors who are living way above their means. And if they yeah. have the, the audacity to ask me straight out, I'm going to tell them. Maybe there's a lesson there for them. I don't know, but yeah, the but, lesson uh, was don't ask dumb questions at dinner when you've had a. This bottle is why everybody <laughs> likes having me as a neighbor because I'm below everybody's means. <laughs> I make More mentally and emotionally than anything, yes. but yes, I eventually you're up there. That's a great place to leave this uh, discussion on etiquette. Don't be that woman at OG's house. Don't be that guy. <laughs> don't be that person. The moral that, of that story. That don't is, be that, that guy. is the worst. I don't even understand why you would just continue on that path. Like, yeah, really? I, you could totally read it too. Like, the whole table was like, eh, ex nay on the estrogen <laughs> clay. Like, yeah. like, I'm like, oh, it's fine. Well, anyway, so what do you guys think about the Cowboys last year? Like, I was trying to get out of it like a million times. <laughs> yeah. And like, so how I know really, how much was it? It's, it's okay. We're all friends. And I'm like, we're not like this friends. I will tell you, <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to want to hear you're this. You're wrong. <laughs> I know. Uh, yes, it was very awkward. So ugly. On uh, that <laughs> so note, ugly. it is, it is just, I can't imagine being in that situation, even hearing her go on and on about that. Hey, uh, time for us to find out what all of you are doing, where you work. And uh, why don't we start with you, Mr. OG? Big plans this weekend? I am uh, presently out of town on vacation celebrating my 20th anniversary, 25 years hanging out with the same gal and uh, 20 years married. And we are in Florida. I thought when he was talking about his 20th, I was like, are you celebrating your 20th birthday for like the 27th time or? 20th anniversary, something? sir. Yes. Thank you very much. Gotcha. All right. Quarter yes. century. I've snookered her for she's, well over half her life. Someday she's going to catch on. Someday. Someday. <laughs> uh, Len, He's not too far off, it seems sometimes. Len, how about you? What's going on at lenpenzo.com? Well, uh, now that I'm retired... Uh, hey, a whole bunch more. hold on a second. Oh. Ta-da! What? Right. What? When did you do this? Today. Oh. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> like, as yeah. we record this today, you did this? Yes. Holy wow, Lord. you buried the lead here. Unbelievable. That's it. On a Monday. That's it. Damn. Well, I, I couldn't really tie it in with, you know, etiquette. Some, how about, you know, how, about how, to, how to quit your job? <laughs> how to walk in out. and go, take this job and shove it. No, <laughs> no. So anyways, I don't know. What am I doing? I'm, I'm uh, working on the blog. Uh, let's see what's going on over there. I don't know. Stop on by. Still, still, still still just slow a lot it. of stupid stuff. You know, I don't look at it. Just come on over. Come on over and say hi. I don't know, man. You've had some interesting uh, black coffee discussions lately, <laughs> which are always a lot of fun at lempenzo.com. Paula Pant, what's happening at Afford Anything? On the Afford Anything podcast, we have uh, Michael Slepian. He is a professor at Columbia University, and he talks about the secret life of secrets, basically the psychology of secrets. It's a fascinating discussion. I guess sort of maybe ties in a little bit with etiquette. We tie it a little, a little bit with finance, but uh, yeah, the psychology of secrets on the Afford Anything podcast. The psychology of secrets. Maybe, Doug, you need to listen to that one, huh? About keeping a secret. 
I don't know how to do that. Joe. He's got no idea. <laughs> no. But In our family, we had this thing called uh, it was the family. It was the patriarch's family's last name, and that's and we would, it's like the Smith. We called a Smith secret, and it would be like this: the things that'd be like, okay, so nobody knows this, but did you know that Aunt Karen? Da, da, da. It's like, oh yeah, no, I heard that. How did you hear it? It was a secret. Oh, uh, Aunt Donna told me. <laughs> you know, it's like everybody <laughs> knew, and it was like you. And then you know, it'd be like, okay, now nobody knows, right? Okay, good. <laughs> We we called it like this the Smith family secret or whatever. It was just always like, okay, so here's another one. Did you know about cousin Nate? <laughs> and nobody knows that everybody knows. Everybody knew that everybody knew, everybody but everybody did, pretended yes. to not know. Perfect. So that the illusion is maintained. The illusion of secrecy. <laughs> yes. That's coming up at the Afford Anything podcast, where finer podcasts are listened to. Doug, you got it from here, man. What should we have learned today? Well, Joe, first, there are as many unwritten rules to dictate the use of money as there are written ones. Keep learning and refining your habits, you Philistines. Figure it out. Second, if you're looking for the ultimate egg cream recipe, just ask Paula. I mean, that woman can work magic with a Capri Sun and some cough syrup. But the big lesson... I knew we shouldn't have started the show with a mob boss as a backer. I mean, geez, Joe's mom makes Tony Soprano look like Julia Child. I make one late payment. She's got my fingers in a vice and a car battery hooked up to my nipples. Thanks to Paula Pant for joining us today. You'll find her podcast, Afford Anything, wherever you're listening to us today. Thanks to Len Penzo for joining us. You can find Len Penzo at lenpenzo.com forward slash blue jeans. Thanks also to OG. Looking for great financial planning help? Call neighbor Doug. Looking for mostly okay financial help? Head to stackingbenjamins.com forward slash OG for his calendar. This show is the property of SB Podcast LLC, copyright 2022, and is written in part by Paula Palach, who helps writers power their words, their work, and their earning potential with her Powerhouse Writers Coaching Program. Find out more at powerhousewriters.com. Thanks also to our team who made today possible. Karen Repine is our producer. Tina Eichenberg and Gertrude Smith are our social media mavens. And Brooke Miller handles the show notes and our amazing newsletter, The 201. Not only should you not take advice from anybody you're listening to right now, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, speak with a real financial advisor like me. That's it for today. We'll see you back here on Monday on Stacking Benjamins. Welcome to the after show. This is the part of the show that doesn't exist. You know, I was going to talk about etiquette, but I think that we have to, <laughs> but I think that we have to talk about uh, Len Penzo's retirement, don't we? I think we have to talk about that. Yes, Doug? <laughs> Doug, we were thinking that maybe you'd pontificate about uh, Len's about retirement. retirement and how great it is. Yes. Oh my God, Len, let's hang out. Tell me, it's tell me, Dougie. Awesome sauce. <laughs> Ain't nobody telling you what to do except your wife. It's amazing. You got that Golfing to look forward to. Every other day, getting worse at a game you spend so much time thinking about. It's amazing. Boy, what could be bad about that? Paula, tips for Len on his uh, new retirement? 
Uh, whoo. Well, so you'll you'll find that you will be spending a lot of time at home, um, just by virtue of you know not going into an office okay. every day. So develop some kind of habits that get you routinely out of the house because otherwise inertia can kick in and it's easy to just always be at home. Yeah, that's so, the bar, Len. <laughs> so, what you, so what do you suggest? Yeah, go, going out. I mean, here. it could be anything. It could be um, like a favorite walk that you take um, or a favorite bike riding trail or, you know, something like that. Something that gets you kind of out. Even if it's not like your normal workout, even if it's just 20 minutes of like, you take a walk to something, someplace scenic, and then you turn around and double back. Could be a favorite rave that you go to every <laughs> Thursday night at 3 a.m. Yes. Yeah, it could be that. Could be that. But better to get not. out of the house earlier in the day, which so I guess you really you have to stay at that rave until sunrise and then you just never make it home. So then you're out in the morning. So, so the, then ev- it works. everybody at 7 a.m. at the Waffle House knows Uncle Len's name. <laughs> As he's, it's it's ihop now ihop is a place to be is it i don't go to the ihop because i'm not sure i speak all the languages so at the mm. international house of pancakes Let no, I, used to go pick up, I used to go pick up donuts you know every saturday morning and the same four group of guys would be at that donut shop old old guys and i'm sure they're obviously retired but they, they obviously they met there every saturday morning real early just they're sitting there talking, having their coffee, eating their donuts, you know. I used to listen to a show line on my commute, Johnny in the Morning on, on WMVP uh, Chicago. And in the mornings, he, he, he would play these bizarre games where people call in, they win trips to, you know, Orlando or wherever. And uh, he played this game called Cop or No Cop for the fifth caller. This woman calls in. And she's like, what are the rules? He's like, I can't tell you the rules. You just have to say cop or no cop. And she's like, okay, cop. And then they, you hear the, the phone dial and somebody answers, says, Southside Dunkin' Donuts, may I help you? And he's like, yeah, this is Johnny in the morning from WMVP. Is one of Chicagoland's finest there? And like, excuse me? Is there a police officer at the donut shop? Yes, there is. You win. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is this donut shop I go to, it's two doors down is a little mini annex, a police annex for the main city. It was two doors down from that donut shop. You can't I bet they have like a... Why do you think they put it there, Len? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a city planner earning their paycheck yeah, right there. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, gee, you got uh, some advice for uh, Uncle Len as he retires? I do. I would say that the biggest thing is you need to make sure that you hang out with people that are substantially younger than you a lot. Oh. Because if you end up with that group of all the retirees at the donut shop, that's when you said that, I was like, oh, my gosh, how terrible. You're going to end up, you know, you'll just be old. So if you want to stay young, you have to hang around young people. So go find something to do that young people do. And I mean, like, you know, you're obviously a svelte man of 47 or 48. So I might look in your like mid thirties, you know, go find, go find like a soccer league to join. That's back all to the rave. Back to something. the rave. He's going back to the rave. Why yeah, do you think no, Paul think- is here? Yeah, no, I know. I mean, there's, there is some of that. And, and Joe does that magically, you know, he keeps me around just to keep him young because I give him so much crap all the time that <laughs> it's it keeps, like, it's like, it made my like, hair uh, go away is what it did. What's the brain thing that you do to like make your brain strong. Oh, There's like the brain thing I do around you is whap it on the desk over and over and over. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. Like those, this, like there's just, just such weird synapses that fire in communicating with me that it just, it creates new neuron connections and neuroplasticity or something. Isn't that what it's called? The, the concept yeah, yeah, of neuroplasticity, uh, you're building new neural networks. See? That's, that's what I do. That's what I do for all you guys. He's mostly a, he's a network builder. Extent, he's a networker. Yeah. Some, to some extent, Doug, but yeah, Paul is right. You have to be able to get out of the house. I go out to lunch almost every day and not because it's like healthy or inexpensive or whatever. It's because if I don't, I will, I I've sat in the same chair in this same house for a week straight nonstop and not even thought about going outside. I and so by going advice. out to lunch, even yeah. just Chick-fil-A, you know, it just I think that's, forces yeah, me I love to go Chick- out. This is the peach shake season, you know, oh, that's peach. Chick-fil-A. You can't, okay. You got it. Okay. Then number two then would be to take care of your body. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> peach shakes are not on the list. You're Wait allowed. a minute. Number th- number 12 grilled nuggets twice. You can have 24 grilled nuggets. That's what you can have every time you go to Chick-fil-A. That's it. No mac and cheese. 
And then I think the last rule here is if you're going to get the salad, make sure you're not with other people and split the check. I think that's where we end it. Yes. Bam. I feel like there's more we can talk about because Doug really has to go to the bathroom. Oh. I just so badly want to like drag this on. Oh, I was trying to like so come up with hard. more stuff. Oh, I'm in so much pain right now. You For, do what the truckers do and just have the have the one gallon bucket right there, the milk milk cart. One gallon wouldn't just, hold it all. Doug gets a. <laughs> Doug all of a sudden gets a, like when my kids were like, uh, you know, a, a year and a half old and they had diapers on, Doug gets like a far away look in his eye all of a sudden. <laughs> and it's better. Yes. You know exactly, exactly. what's going on. <laughs> He's, oh. he's like sweating urine right now. Oh it's my like God, it hurts so <laughs> filled much. all the way up. Teeth are floating. Like, you're like Please, can't even concentrate. It's gonna hurt so bad. Oh, was it one of the etiquette rules to say never say you got to go to the bathroom? Yeah, there yeah. you go. All right, guys, Bye. we'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye. Right. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. There are about a million podcasts about money, but Bad With Money with Gabby Dunn is the one where finances meet social justice. Investing in dating with Bella Gandhi. Do you believe that people should pay for dating apps? To me, invest in the dating process. There's nothing more important than finding the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. There's a stigma. Everything should be free. You're going to go to Whole Foods, meet eyes over mangoes, and all the dominoes fall in perfect order. That's just a load of garbage. Bad With Money. Listen, wherever you get your podcasts.